When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what the imposter said while he was still alive. After three days I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he had been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go. Make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone.
Welcome to our virtual Easter morning worship. We invite you to participate with us. If you have a bulletin, please follow along with us. Uh, many of the songs you'll know, and uh, we're going to have a glorious worship on this uh, beautiful Easter morning. We begin with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. And blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into one flock, who guides us into all truth. And now let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by the ways that lead to death. We have not loved our sisters and brothers as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God, of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life given in Christ our risen Lord. Amen. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent the Son to atone for our sins in the name of Jesus Christ. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven. Let the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy, and inspire you to live for others. Our processional hymn, Christ is Risen, Alleluia.
Holy Gospel this morning comes to us from St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. And then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead and indeed is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb and quickly, with fear and great joy, they ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise you, O Christ. I greet you with the grace, peace, mercy, and love poured into our lives by God, our Creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. This Easter Sunday is different. Let's get that out of the way right now. We don't have a church full of people. We don't have our trumpets. But we are together. But it's very, very different. Normally I would preach on the, the Gospel of John. I just love the resurrection story from the Gospel of John. It leads so nicely into next week's lesson, but because it's different, I'll be different. And I want to talk to you about Matthew, the gospel that we just heard. Many of you are watching with us, and, and thanks be to God that we have this social media access that we can be together, even if it's virtually. We can get together and celebrate this wonderful time in our Christian life. But as we're home, many of us are disconnected. Many of us are alone. Many of us are fearful of what the next day will bring. We feel disconnected and lonely, almost hopeless sometimes, sad. And so people say there will be no Easter this year, but there will be Easter this year. There is always Easter. Every year, as I come to you and give you my message, I ask you to try to put yourself into the mind and the frame of what that first Easter looked like. And it's hard because we're so excited about Easter. But this year, the first Easter seems so much like what we're going through right now. I'm sure that the two Marys that we heard about in this lesson weren't dancing and skipping to the tomb with their Easter bonnets, to the glorious strains of Jesus Christ is risen today. No, they were probably drudging their way, shrouded in black with maybe the dirge of, were you there when they crucified my Lord playing behind them? They were still in that Good Friday moment they were still in that terrible time 
when Jesus, not just their Lord and Savior, but their friend, their companion, someone they loved so much, dying a gruesome, horrible, unnecessary death on the cross. That image, that image was burned into them. And now, here, three days later, they don't have Jesus. And in many ways, they may feel the way we are feeling right now, hopeless. What's going to become of us? And so, unlike the other Gospels, they don't go to the tomb for any reason. Maybe they're confused. Maybe they're aimless. Maybe they just don't know what to do. Sound familiar? Isn't that we are where we are right now? Aimless and confused. And so, they go to the tomb. They're just drawn to Jesus as, as maybe one of us would go to the cemetery to pay respects to a, to a loved one who has passed. They go to the tomb and so something miraculous happens. There's an earthquake and an angel appears and the stone is rolled away. This massive stone that was keeping Jesus in has been rolled away to let the witnesses in so they can see. But that's not what happens in this gospel. The angel says to them, don't be afraid. How fearful a moment that must have been. In fact, the guards that were guarding the tomb were frozen in fear, like death had overcome them. No one has ever seen anything like this quite before. Don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus. He's not here. Remember? He told you that? Remember? He said, on the third day I will rise again. Remember? It's true. He's gone. Just like he said he would be. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. What wonderful reassuring words comes from this angel of God. Don't be afraid. It's words that resonate with us today as we are fearful about things in our lives. We hear the angel say to us, don't be afraid. God will keep his promises to us and deliver us from all the things that separate us and make us fearful. And the angel says, go and tell the disciples to, that Jesus will meet them in Galilee. And so they leave. And they go to tell the disciples. And I love this part. They go with fear and great joy. Great joy? How does fear and great joy come into the same sentence? Joy is something that we have deep inside of us. It's what we have because God himself resides inside of us. This joy which is not something that comes and goes, but stays. It is the breath of God within us. It moves us and keeps us alive. This great joy, fear, on the other hand, is a reaction to this moment. We're not talking about fear and happy. Those are emotions that come and go. But this joy that wells up deep inside of us, that keeps us alive and moving. Remember, Psalm 30, but weeping spends the night, but joy comes in the morning. This joy that comes from our understanding, our love, our trust, and our obedience to God is a great joy in our lives. And so they go, and they tell the disciples, but on their way, just out of nowhere, Jesus greets them. How crazy is that? Jesus greets them on the road. And what does he say? Don't be afraid. There's nothing to fear. Fear is an emotion that overcomes us, but now in their great joy, they're not afraid. And they drop to their knees and they hold him around the feet and they worship him. This resurrection event continues in worship. 
Worship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. It is not an end, but a continuation of the love story between us and God, that God has raised Jesus from the dead, and now they have seen their Lord and Savior, their friend, their beloved, and all things have been changed. So don't believe it when they tell you that Easter is not coming this year. It is coming. It is coming just as it always comes. It always comes darkly to the tomb. And we leave the tomb with a great and shining light that Christ has provided for us. Right now we are in the darkness of isolation caused by some crazy virus. We will come out of it. Surely we will come out of it and we will rejoice because that's what God has promised for us, that we are his beloved children and life continues. Our life is always amazing to the love of Christ. So sisters and brothers in Christ, don't be afraid. Rejoice. Rejoice because Jesus has been raised from the dead. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. as witnesses, as preachers, 
teachers, and leaders. Open our hearts to their proclamation this day and always. Lord, in your mercy, you are all free. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience this unity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep for those who weep and mourn for those who mourn. Greater the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. We pray especially for Marie and the Gigliotti family as they mourn the loss of their beloved Dennis this week. Those affected by coronavirus, those on our prayer list, and those we now name before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless doctors, nurses, first responders, and all healthcare workers, police officers, firefighters, corrections officers, emergency personnel, sanitation and transportation workers, truckers, and all who keep the supply chain moving, restaurants and supermarket workers, and all supply essential services who put their very lives on the line to keep us all safe from the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. What else would the church pray for this morning? We pray for all the people of God celebrating this glorious resurrection day in ways that they have never experienced it before. Lord, assure them that even though we are not together, Christ is with us and Christ is risen from the dead. And we pray for our Bishop Paul and all our church leaders and synod staff. We pray and thank them for their guidance and their strength and their leadership during this troubled time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. We remember especially your servant Dennis, who's called home this week into your loving arms of your mercy. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayers. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, gathered by God's Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus told us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace.
Thanks be to God.